We are now in a position such that we can compile and stream a sequence to a target and make it run. Now let's add some new elements. The truck needs a driver, so we will add a character's head to the project. We will be able to cut away for some animated close-up headshots. In the Assets pane, we have a folder called Driver. This contains a DFF file called driverhead.dff, which is a head with facial animation embedded as morph targets. There is also a second DFF called Bulkhead. This will act as a backdrop for the head and represents the interior of the truck's cab. We will add these to the workspace in such a way as to be out of sight of the main world. We will then be able to cut away to these models when the storyboard requires close-ups of the truck driver. In the Game Explorer, we'll create a new folder as a child of the main global folder and call it Driver. We will make this the working folder. Drag the head into the design view. This creates a new entity in the driver folder. Expand the folder and name this new entity driver head. With the entity selected, we press the F3 key to make it the center of interest in the workspace. Now activate the move tool and move the head off to one side out of sight of the main street. We'll expand the workspace window to make this operation easier. Once the head is positioned, we'll add the bulkhead object to the workspace, creating another entity in the driver folder. We'll name this entity bulkhead. Using the move and rotate tools, we carefully maneuver it into place above the driver's head. This gives the illusion that it's in the cab of the truck. Let's suppose the storyboard dictates that there'll be two close-ups of the head. Each time the camera cuts to the face, it animates via morphing to speak into the headset. The first shot is two seconds in duration, and the second is three. For each shot, we will need to activate the morphing and animate the head rotating slightly as if looking through the cab's windscreen. Again, we can use the sequencer to achieve this. First, we again need to add a behavior to our driver head entity. Opening the behavior list, we navigate to the examples folder and choose see morph animate. We drag and drop this onto the driver head entity. This is the behavior that is used to drive the morph target animation. We want to control the behavior in the sequencer so that the morph animations begin and end at the correct times in the cutscene. Again, the first step is to drag the entity from the Game Explorer to the sequencer. The driver head properties window opens to reveal the available animatable parameters. We select the matrix so we can keyframe the head rotations and the morph rate, which will allow us to control the morph target's animations. When we click OK, a new track gets added to the sequencer timeline bearing the name of the entity. Expanding this reveals the two parameters we selected for keyframing. To create our two close-up shots, we need to define where they start and end. At this stage, it does not really matter where they are on a timeline, as we can move them into their final places once they have been defined. Firstly, we will establish some basic anchor keys. Move the playhead to zero seconds if it's not already there. Right-click on the matrix parameters sequence bar and select Design View Matrix Editor from the Keyframe Editor submenu. Right-click again and choose Create Keyframe. Move the playhead to roughly 5, 10, 15 and 20 seconds and create four more keyframes. Move the playhead somewhere between keys 2 and 3, right-click and select Linear Interpolator from the Interpolator menu. Repeat this process for keys 4 and 5. These frames now define when our close-ups occur. Zoom into the first shot. First let's create the rotations for the head. Selecting the Rotate tool, we move the playhead along the timeline to the approximate position for the first rotation. As soon as we apply the tool to rotate the head, a keyframe is created. Again, its exact position is not critical at this point, 
as the key can be freely moved on the timeline to get a more accurate placing. As you scrub the playhead, you will see the rotation interpolating between the keys. Add a second rotation. Now let's suppose we want the head to remain at the first position for a second or two. This can easily be accomplished by selecting the key, right clicking and selecting copy. Now, moving the playhead to a new point on the timeline, right clicking on the track and clicking paste will duplicate the keyframe. Pasting can also be done with the standard key command, Ctrl V. If you find yourself creating keys that you don't want, you can delete them using a the delete key. Finally, if you create something incorrectly, you can step back in the process by use of the undo button. And you can step forward again using the redo button. Creative use of these edit functions should allow you to tune your animations to get the desired movement. The other element that we need to control is the facial morphing as our character speaks. Controlling the morph rate will ensure the animation occurs at the correct times, when the head is on camera. This is extremely useful, as the only other way to do this would be to export all of the pauses from Max or Maya as part of the morph animation. This would balloon the file size and thus memory usage dramatically, especially for a model with this many triangles. We select the morph rate track and move the playhead back to the start. Notice that the pane at the right hand end of the sequencer changes to show the morph rate slider with its default value of zero. Right click on the bar and create a keyframe. Hold down the control key and move the playhead until it snaps to the first keyframe of close up shot one. Create another keyframe here and using the slider, set its value to 1.0. Scrubbing the playhead back and forth over this frame will confirm that the value changes from zero to one at this point. This will cause the morph animation to begin here. Snap the playhead to the end of the shot and move the slider back to zero to create a further keyframe to pause the animation. Repeat this process for the second shot. As with the wheel rotation control we dealt with in tutorial 3, we will not see the results of these edits directly in the workspace. You will need to compile and stream the data to the target to see it played back. In the next tutorial, we will add some camera cuts to create some shots and start to bring the cutscene together.